I can't believe I won. And you still got people out there with double masks and face shields and shit. Look into it. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Hello and welcome to another episode of Look Into It. Tonight, we go deep with conspiracies. No jujitsu, no music, no strip clubs, none of that shit. We go straight into conspiracies. And my guest, I had her on Eddie Bravo Radio, my prior podcast, Back in Another Life. And uh, she's she's the Cam Trail queen, Kristen Megan. What's up? It's been What's a long up? time. Yeah, so I think I I met you back in 2013. That was pre Invisalign. <laughs> oh shit! I got Invisalign too. I love it. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta you gotta keep wearing those retainers though. Yeah. God damn it, it's so annoying. I know. <laughs> but uh, uh, for those of you out there that don't know who Kristen Megan is, she is uh, huge in the chemtrail department. I mean, there's so many conspiracy theories out there. There's so many different levels of how the new world order is uh, moving in and trying to control us all. And to think, to think that they're not spraying the motherfucking skies with some shit is just retarded. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's it's extremely retarded. I mean, it's right above you. They're spraying it. Above you, they're taking a complete, completely clear day and filling it with artificial clouds. And you're like, oh, you're crazy. You live by an airport. Ooh, and sh- it's ridiculous. So I want to get into, we don't have to go into the whole chemtrail story, but I we definitely need to we, summarize how y- you were in the Air Force. You were like in charge of checking radiation levels around bases and that kind of stuff. And take us through how you, at first you thought chemtrails was like, you know, just some stupid, crazy conspiracy theory, right? Take us through it. Okay. Well, first, I think it's best if I explain my background. So I have worked in the field of occupational and environmental toxicology for now 20 years Uh, Don't worry, I die in my roots. (laughs) But um, so when I worked in the Air Force for nine years, I worked in a field called bioenvironmental engineering. And if the present day, I think because of all the COVID bullshit, like most people know what OSHA is. Um, So we were the liaisons for the Department of Defense for OSHA, EPA, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, dealing with like sea burning, which is chemical, biological radiation and nuclear attacks and how to respond to them. So anyway, that was my job. So when I was in the Air Force, my job was to know, like when we acquired chemicals, I would have to tie them. I was one of a handful of people that would approve um, chemicals and then we'd have to tie them to a process because I'm an industrial hygienist. That's not a janitor. It's not a dentist. I am an exposure scientist. So I had to track, okay, we're ordering this chemical, which I know causes cancer. And what is it being tied to? So let's kind of go into how I found it. So you kind of know my background and what I do. I remember I was watching the documentary that Alex Jones put out called terror storm. My brother showed it to me and he was like, so deep into conspiracies. I was like, this dude is crazy. And I started watching it and it covered a lot of things about like nine 11 and other things. And he started talking to me about chemtrails. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I was offended. Like I was outright offended. And I thought you're crazy. Like what happened to you when I left? Because I was overseas, by the way. I lived in England. And uh, fast forward, I thought, well, shit, (laughs) I'm I can debunk this. Like I'm going to be the person that debunks this because I'm the one that does chemical acquisition and approvals. Well, that's when my whole entire life changed. I'm not just saying that. Like my whole entire life changed because in the process, and I'm going to give you the footnotes. In the process of attempting to debunk this. I in the I was literally finding what is now called safety data sheets, SDSs that used to be called um, MSDSs. I can't remember what movie it was. It was about baseball where someone had a birth certificate written in crayon to try to play. (laughs) 
And that's exactly what I was seeing. This SDS was written so sloppily and did not have cast numbers. Cast numbers are basically exposure groups. And then you have packaging groups. So like, what is the hazard of a chemical? What is this classification? And then how do you dispose of this chemical? Like I had to track a chemical acquisition from cradle to grave, right? So basically in the process of doing that, I was like, what is the military doing? Because ev my last two Air Force bases that I was stationed at were um, air logistics centers. And that means you have Army, Navy, Coast Guard, you have them all. Even foreign people uh, like from like England and Finland were at our bases. And the dots started connecting. And before I said a word, I started doing soil sampling, which is called grid sampling, taking background samples, comparing it to historically what was in my environment around me in Oklahoma. Then I went on to Georgia, did the same thing. And a long story short, I found heavy metals, aluminum, barium, stronium, things that I was actually in other facets of the military trying to engineer the hazard out why were we using these things? But here is where it's different. It was the form in which it was being acquired. Why are we using like powders? Like why were we using the very single things? So let me back up. When you have a, like, let's say in the Air Force, someone's repairing an aircraft or, the, or there's corrosion and rust and they have to sand it and paint it. We always want to go with the most green thing, but sometimes you have a technical order that says you must use this hazardous material, whatever. I had to make sure they have respirators, capture ventilation, all that. We were using like powder coated things, things that were like tiny, tiny canisters. It wasn't making any sense. So in the attempt to debunk it, I uncovered it and I thought I'm done. I am done with the Air Force. I was in for nine years. And by the way, right before I left, I had just won non-commissioned officer of the quarter. So um, there's like ramp rampant rumors that are running around that I like got in trouble. And this was me just like a rogue employee. And that's absolutely not true. So basically since 2010, I've been exposing this. And at the same time, because I'm an exposure scientist, a lot of the nefarious actions of the government have fallen into the lap of my profession. So I've just been calling out the government and the egregious things that they've been doing since I left active duty. Like my oath doesn't expire and, um, I get attacked a lot, but you know, I like to sleep at night. And if that means telling the truth with the information that I'm able to gather in my credentials, then that's what I'm going to do. Now, have you had any uh, people knock on your door from the government and tell you to shut up? No, no, I have not. Actually, I, for three years, used an attorney and got federal whistleblower protection from the federal government. There's a process to do that through OSHA, and it basically means that you cannot be blackballed or harassed by the federal government, and a judge decides that for you. So actually, when I left the Air Force, I went and worked at a VA hospital, and I was able to do that without any sort of repercussions. Now, um, maybe they just... They figure as long as you're not on the mainstream media, she can't do that much damage, right? They're probably looking at it like that. Like if all of a sudden you were getting on, I mean, they would never put you on CNN to begin with, right? I would, never, I would never go on CNN. I think I'd rather hump a cactus. Um, Why? Because you think they're just going to try to just smear you? I have been in the media for so many years. As you know, I was even on Joe's TV show back in the day and we agreed to disagree, but- I think this is what I've learned when the government decides to just go rogue is that when they start to propose things, they're most, most likely already doing it. And what I have seen since 2010 is that all these programs are basically now openly admitted. I don't know who's been following like geoengineeringwatch.org, but like since then they had an aerosol scientist go up an air sample because that that was the biggest part in like taking all the parts of the puzzle and trying to just be like here you go anyone that doesn't believe this because when you are sampling hazards in the environment you have to have media that is capable of grabbing the material does that make sense like you have to have yes. certain filter media okay so nobody had the correct media but they had someone that had the media and this scientist went up and put it in this mass spectrometer and they found all the materials that we had suspected and the contracts are openly admitted. Like it's so openly out there. Like if you just kind of go on Google or DuckDuckGo and you search up, you can't use the term chemtrail. You have to use like geoengineering. Now it's climate engineering. 
And stratospheric aerosol, aerosol injections. Injection, yes. Stratospheric aerosol injections. SAI, geoengineering. Chemtrails is, uh, you know, they it's demonized that term. If you if you if you if you say you believe in chemtrails, you're a nut. You're crazy. If you say, if you say that the CIA has got some kind of secret program where they're spraying metallic particles in the sky. You're a fucking nut. If you say that the CIA is spraying metallic particles in the sky, you're fucking insane, right? Right? And then in 2016, what happens? John John Brennan gets in front of CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, and he says... Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, Global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other geoengineering initiatives. We go from the CIA spraying chemicals or metallic particles in the sky is huh? a, the, one of the craziest things you could say to, oh, this is how we're going to save the world. Get, how, what are the odds that it's the same thing? We're going to save the world. The CIA is going to spray the sky with metallic particles. And that's going to save the world. But 10 years ago, it was the craziest theory ever. But now it's going to save the world from global warming. How crazy is that? Well, what's really <laughs> what, are the odds? what are the odds that the craziest conspiracy theory is now the theory that's going to save the world? What? So, Eddie, I think that in 2013, when I was did Joe's TV show and your radio show, I think that was the last time I actually was on like a big platform talking about it. And it wasn't like I was afraid to talk about it. It was just like, listen, I'm passing the baton because more and more people came forward and it's not my job to tell their stories, but people came forward. But this, (laughs) this is the one that makes me almost laugh. They are openly admitting it. And I, for the first time in eight or nine years, I can't math. I went to public school, but, um, I gave a speech at a health summit. A friend of mine was throwing this and I thought, oh, I'm kind of exhausted talking about this issue, but no, I'm going to do it for her. And there was two pilots in the, in the uh, audience. And I didn't know it really until like two minutes before I went on. And I was like, well, shit, like they're going to, these dudes are just going to heckle me. They didn't heckle me. I was met in the hallway after my speech. And one of them was from the air force and said, I know what you're talking about. Yep. B-17s are doing it. Oh yes. I know all about it. And I thought, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I know that I know what I'm talking about, but it's like, this guy was like unapologetically like, yes. And he retired and now he's a commercial pilot. And I thought, you know, people like you need to come forward. Let me show you the Avenue I went. So you can't be blackballed. I mean, even when I was talking about this, like years ago, the weather channel had a whole episode about how to steer tornadoes how to reduce the impact of a hurricane, all these different things. And just remember when the government is selling you the idea of something or they're running a drill for something, 
They're already doing it. Yeah, totally. Are you aware that like in the 1800s, they were doing drawings of like how to modify the weather? You can't. I, you now can't we're going into have, Tartaria. That's, oh, we yeah. can get into Tartaria. That's you, all you, I'm into right now. You cannot have an idea that is that old and not and think that it didn't progress into something. And it's, I mean, we know this is, this is my biggest, this is what chaps my ass is when people say, oh, that's cloud seeding. I'm like, if they're fucking cloud seeding, we didn't just stop at the Model T Ford. We literally have fucking cars driving themselves without a driver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. So people say, oh, that's just cloud seeding. They've up. always, they've always admitted that. I'm like, yeah, that's weather modification, you idiot. And they're like agreeing with you, like, oh, that's just cloud seeding. That's just, yeah, weather, cloud seeding, yeah, weather modification. Yeah, <laughs> like, and it's, we, it's, so, so and with, it, um, and it's openly admitted at this point. If you just go, the best resource is geoengineeringwatch.org. Dane w- Wiggington is the is absolute. Still, is, is he still on it? Is he, he still, still is. He okay. still is. And they are filing lawsuits, they're getting information. But have you watched? Um, the documentary, it's, I don't know how it's surviving on YouTube, but it is called the dimming. Have you watched it? No, no. Well, I'm in that one pre Invisalign, just <laughs> trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> Were your um, teeth busted back then? Uh, I could probably, it was like a bomb went off, you know, okay. but, uh, you know, it's all good. Man. <laughs> they look um, good now. <laughs> well, thanks. I <laughs> have my fresh install. So, so with the satellite thing, the satellite thing, they 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 just started making so much money yeah. pretending that they were uh, launching satellites into fucking space when they never stopped putting them on balloons. They're on balloons. So now that people are finding out and they're waking up, now they're all, they're full blown into, guess what? We're going to start uh, putting satellites on balloons now. If you look up uh, the Loon Project, they have documentaries, uh, high-level documentaries, talking about how the future of satellites is, is are bo- satellites on balloons. The Loon Project. Look that up. And they don't even talk about they don't even talk about space uh, satellites anymore. It's like, oh, that's old school. We don't need to do it like that anymore. All we need to do is just, you know, put them on gigantic, like hot air balloons. That's what they do. And they, they said they have thousands of them up already. And the goal is to give everybody free, uh, free internet in third world countries. It's so humanitarian. Oh, they're so nice. They're so nice. So that's how they do it. They're pretending like, oh, shit, this is way better than putting them up in space. We're just going to fucking have them on balloons and then we can c- control them with the air current and all that. Like, bitch, you always had them on balloons. They were always on balloons. Yes, from the 1800s. And if you watch the dimming, it is on YouTube. It is freely. It's Last I checked, it's still on there somehow. But you, if you're on Facebook, folks, don't share it on Facebook. You will get a 90 day ban. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. The dimming. But the I the dimming on YouTube. Um, okay. I And Wigginton's in there, Dan Wigginton. Yes, and you will watch where they had the aerosol scientists go up and, and grab sample the tiny nanoparticulates and put it on a GCMS, which is a uh, mass, basically gas uh, spectrum, uh, gas chromatograph. Like there's different, like I said, when you sample, you have to run it, certain media. So they were able to they were able to find certain levels of constituents that should not be in the environment. And I understand there's a lot of pollution in the environment. And this is why I always cringe when people like in the winter here in Michigan, they'll share videos of like children making snow cones out of snow. I'm like, don't think of the atmosphere as like an air filter. And you don't want to like clean off the air filter and make ice cream. Um, You know, it's just, you have to understand how to sample something on the correct media. And until, because I actually filmed my part in this video 10 years ago, I still lived in Chicago 10 years ago. So that's how long it took them to develop the ability to sample. And they went up there and they sampled. And I just like, it was a breath of fresh air for me because it doesn't matter the amount of tax I've been under, or this is what cracks me up. People think I got into this for my 15 minutes. It's like, listen, I, this is not what I want to be known for, but I'm doing the ethical thing, which is exposing that our government is the biggest polluter. And now we've got like double validated because more people came forward. You've got people, Eddie, there are four star generals in this documentary admitting all this stuff. Like I'm not alone. That's why I've kind of just passed the baton and said, I, I saw my part. 
the chemical acquisition uh, aspects of it. And then, you know, remember I blew the whistle in 2010, you know, it's 2022 now, a lot has changed. More people have come forward. And I, I mean, if time travel were a thing, that's how I view weather modification. We should not alter, you know, mother earth. We shouldn't alter the natural progression of what's going on around us, what we can do is come up with engineering controls. How do we deal with droughts? How do we deal with this? How do we deal with that? And uh, we just need to stop messing with um, the way that things are supposed to happen. I just think we're putting a ripple in things. And when you take, just like taxation, (laughs) when you take from one and give to another, like what are you doing when you're steering clouds to create rain? Because we were cloud seeding back in Vietnam. We flooded the Ho Chi Minh trails. So that trucks and foot soldiers couldn't get through. And that is openly admitted. And for anyone that still, for some reason, can't grasp this, one of my master's degrees in my environmental sciences aspect, this was in my books. It was literally in my books. Now, um, there's plenty of articles. You can just go uh, to China causes rain or uh, uh, China controls the rain. I think the most recent one was Spain. I I think it was Spain. If there's a recent, I tweeted it. There was something about Spain just flat out admitted they uh, geoengineered stuff for their crops. I believe it was. No, totally. It's not just Spain. I mean, Abu Dhabi, it's huge. You can go to to Newsweek and Abu Dhabi is, uh, creates 50 days of rain for, you know, whatever, you know, for obvious reasons, really. And then, uh, then China, when, when Beijing hosted the Olympics, it was mainstream. Should we geoengineer a giant flood in DC and really drain that swamp? Cause that's one I could get on board with. You could find China or Abu Dhabi, Dubai, they make rain. It's mainstream mainstream media yeah you know so uh yeah. to think to to think that chemtrails are just some crazy conspiracy theories just it's fucking mind-boggling you know now what do you think what do you think it's about based on what you know what do you what are they doing why are they spraying the skies with barium aluminum aluminum and strontium right well, you know, it's kind Spe- of speculate, weird. speculate. It's, it's kind of weird yes. to bring up COVID, COVID-1984, because if anyone's been paying attention to Klaus Schwab, like, I don't, I know that, you know, Alex Jones, I know Alex Jones, we both know him. We've been on his shows. He has been right. And his coin jar is filled. He's been talking about the great reset for so long. And I think the only positive thing that came out of this scamdemic, this pandemic, is it really it raised awareness to all of the lies surrounding what is going on. When you control the people, what do you control? Money, food. Now, this is just my opinion. Like my whistleblowing has nothing to do with the why. Okay. I just know the what, but connecting the dots over the last 12 years is that we are trying to have a new world order. We are trying to have a one world government How do we do this? We handicap the people. We start rationing. I mean, look at what has been going on. I mean, I'm vegetarian for medical reasons, but I could give a shit if someone wants to eat eight pounds of a steak. But now people are eating bugs like what they're promoting, eating bugs. Like we are trying to cripple society to rely on everything that these governments, I say governments because it's all the EMF. It's the World Economic Forum. It's the Great Reset. I really think that's what it's all encompassed in. And when you when you think about it, all these people that are doing the egregious and nefarious things, they're old, right? They're old people. These old people have been planning this, I'm sure, to be a professional, like, per decade thing. So, like, people like Klaus Schwab, I it would not shock me to think he has his hand in this because you can do a lot of things. You have to think about, so my background is toxicology. So systemic and synergistic exposures are when basically you have multiple hazards, whether it's vaccines, food, the makeup women put on their face to what's in our water, what's in our air. If all those same hazards affect the same target organs, you're dealing with synergistic toxicology. Okay. So we have people now. Now, listen, I'm libertarian, so I don't really care what people do with their bodies or as long as you're not harming me or my property. But look at society. And I'm not trying to drift to whatever. This is an open forum. Think about how feminine men are now. Do you see it around you? It's so hot. It's so hot. 
So like my husband and I were just talking about this, like there's so much femininity and I'm not in any way anti anything you want to be as long as you're an adult, not pushing that shit on kids. But like, we have to think like our water is contaminated. So I have sampled wastewater treatment facilities. We are unable as a society and and state governments, we are unable to filter out a lot of the contaminants that are in our water now from pharmaceuticals to um, like the de-icers that are used on planes that go into the wastewater facilities. We don't have the technology or the filters to filter them out. So we're drinking them. So I always tell people, make sure you have like a, a Berkey reverse osmosis, something, anything is better than nothing. For so what about, what about bottled water? That's a scam too. Oh, absolutely. It's a scam. Listen, I live in Michigan. We're surrounded by lakes and we have literal billboards that say back off suckers with people from Texas with straws, because, you know, I think as a country, we need to make sure everyone has resources, but we have a lot of stuff like Nestle. Nestle is awful. Like, are you, have you been following what's been going on in Mississippi? Like these people do not have water to yes. use their toilets or they don't have any potable water, which means no, drink water. What I'm talking, what I'm talking about though, is, uh, I think every, everybody should know you don't drink the tap water. Everybody should know that. I oh think yes. Most people there's, I know. There's a you, lot of pharmaceuticals in drinking water. No, no, for lot. sure. For, in the tap water. Tap water. Mm-hmm. Chlorine. Now, now um, Chloride. Uh, tap water. Yeah, tap water, one hundred percent. I figured. I mean, I, I still run into people every now and then that say they drink tap water. I, I can't fuck. I'm like, wow, you have not been paying attention, dog. But now and then, you know, you think you're smart. You're not. You're not drinking the tap water. You're buying a, a bottled water. Now I'm thinking, shit. Maybe the bottled water's fucked too. Sam Tripley and I are coming to your town. Catch us on the road doing tinfoil hat comedy. Follow me on Instagram at Tinfoil Hat Comedy Night. Friday, December 2nd, we'll be in Calusa, California. And Saturday, December 3rd, we'll be in Fresno. Go to samtriply.com for more information and to buy your tickets. See you on the road, right? Maybe the bottle water is deep state. What do you think? Call it Arrowhead. You call it all Poland Springs and Avion. Like, so they get you afraid of the tap water and then they. They either these bottled water companies were legit in the beginning and then they get hijacked and taken over later. But if I was in the Illuminati meetings, if I was like, I go, dude, let's talk about this fucking water shit. Why don't we control all the motherfucking water? You yeah. think they're avoiding the new world order by drinking bottled water? Why don't we just buy all that shit? Right. I remember like, when, when bottled water, it started like even like kids thermoses and things like that. It's all, BPA free and all that, but people forget the amount of forever, forever chemicals we have because of, of improper waste disposal in the inability to filter it out. When it comes to bottled water, the problem is you might have actually cleaner water. Like I can say like some bottled water is cleaner, but you are removing the natural nutrients that we need. Mm. I think the best water to, to drink is spring water. I, I believe that hundred percent spring water from the mountains. Yeah, but even but they, certain- they spray up there every time I go s- snowboarding, yeah. dude. Dude, when I'm snowboarding, I'm like, why the fuck are they spraying chemtrails up here? Guess what? We're right next to a giant lake that supplies our drinking water. Yeah, this is the this is what I tell people. Just like there's things I eat or drink, I know are horrible horrible for me, but I'm informed on the hazards of that. You know what I mean? The problem is people are not in informed on the hazards of the water that they're drinking. Everyone thinks like drinking water is healthy. You're being hydrated, but you're not understanding alkaline water is the best for your body. And there are so- How do you know it's alkaline though? It seems like a scam. Well, I mean- How would you know it's alkaline? You can get pH sticks. You could check them. Easy. Yeah, I have them in my house. But the reason I know that I'm good is because I have have a Berkey filter. I have a system in my house. I spent a lot of money. Hell, I have an air filter in my house. I could kill COVID and everything else. And that's because I'm an exposure scientist and I believe in engineering controls. Um, But yeah, I mean, we cannot eliminate all the hazards around us. What we want to do is go back to what I said. We want to reduce that synergistic and systemic exposure. So like stop jabbing yourself with things that are reproductive hazards, carcinogenic, and can literally alter how your body functions. 
So stop jabbing yourself. I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just telling you the hazards that are in them. I don't, I have an 18 year old daughter and a six and a half year old daughter. Neither one of them have ever had an injection in their bodies. So I don't do that. I also try mostly to buy organic, but even there's scams in that. Like an organic stamp doesn't mean shit. So you have to trust your buyer and just do your research. And you know, Eddie, what I have found, which is the most crazy thing, I find the most, most truth about products on TikTok, the China app. How is that? Because there's a lot of farmers on there that literally say like, hey, you can be organic and really not be organic. And these, and they explain like what to buy, what to look for, different things. Um, like oatmeal, for example. Like there's certain brands of oatmeal that are actually organic and don't contain a lot of the glyphosate. And I think the glyphosate is a root cause of a lot of issues that we have going on. Oh, whew. yeah. You know, what's crazy about the whole water thing is, uh, like I said, you think, okay, um, it's pretty obvious tap water is, it tastes like shit. So you, it's, it does. And, and to, to, it's, to got, think, it's got an aftertaste. It's disgusting. I, I don't like tap water and I'm not yeah. high maintenance by any means. <laughs> and, and all nefarious intentions aside, you know, let's just, let's just say, let's just say there's no Illuminati and every, every politician oh, is okay. actually uh, trying to help the country out oh. or the city out or whatever. Um, still, there's no way you could have all that water running through pipes without some chlorine right. in it. Otherwise mm-hmm. it'd get all algae out. So you, that you have to put chlorine in the tap water. Otherwise it'll, it'll, uh, it, you'll be, um, drinking algae and all other kinds of like organisms. So you have to even, so you have to, so you just know that there's chlorine in this shit. So you have to get a high level filter or um, you just drink bottled water. And then I think, Oh, Illuminati ain't that dumb. They, if they want to, if you would think Illuminati, new world order, put shit in their water. No brain, no brainer. Right, you you're Illuminati, and you're not putting shit in the motherfucking water, and the food, and the air. I too yeah. believe. It's like, what are you doing? What guy, people would get fired. Like, we don't got nobody on the water. We ain't putting shit in the water. What? That's the easiest shit. Everybody needs water. Everybody needs air. Put shit in the air. Put shit in the water. Put shit in the food. That's pretty fucking standard New World Order totalitarian shit, right? Like you're not you're gonna let yeah. them drink good water. What the fuck are you doing? Put some like put, put something that fucks them up and keeps them weak or whatever. There's so many ways you can go with it. There's so many different things you could put in the water, but they have to put chlorine in the water. Yeah. It's in pipes. They're under the city yep. so you got you already know it's you, you can't be drinking water with chlorine but this is the crazy thing most most people know that most people with half a brain they do know drink bottled water you bring in your fucking arrowhead your avions everybody drinking the bottled water they're not drinking the tap water but they're putting ice in everything there's i you know, oh, you're, don't get they're me putting started. ice in they're putting ice in everything and you think <laughs> you think uh like the beer you're drinking or the soda you're drinking or the 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 juice you get from the store you're drinking is made with like uh, bottled water? No, they're making they're, Let me tell you something about that. Bullshit so, water for that. I did my rotations cuz I'm cross credentialed in public health and I was doing my rotations in food sanitation. <laughs> we had more bacteria, bad bacteria cuz there's good bacteria. We had more Bad bacteria in ice than toilets. Like ice, like when you go to a, like a, a restaurant and you go up and you get put ice or they, they put ice in your cup, whatever. The but that is, ice is shit they water. Do not, they do not service the ice machines like they should. And there is so much mold and bacteria that accumulates in a lot of these industrial ice machines. For sure. But again, sure. it's one of those things like... I always say my profession is a curse because again, I'm an exposure scientist. So I have to study everything that impacts the human body. And I'm like, Oh my God, how do we even live? Because I definitely listen. I love me some flame and hot Cheetos. And I know red dye is awful for you, but informed consent is key, right? So if you understand, like when I, if I, I've been traveling around the country for the past two and a half years, fighting all those stupid mandates, and anytime I've gone through a drive-thru, I say, please, no ice. Because it's not like I will never drink ice, but I will reduce my exposure 
and hope that these people are properly cleaning their ice machines, but I cannot guarantee it because I'm not inspecting them. Um, another, I, I can tell you all the hidden things that are disgusting. Like air I want, I want to know. Like what? Okay. So if you, so. Say that again? COVID. COVID oh. again. Okay. So during the shutdown. So, so, so do you, do you believe, uh, cause there's three, there's really three basic theories on, on COVID. Okay. Um, one, it came from some kind of animal, bat, snake or something, some kind of animal at wet market or whatever. Second one, uh, it, it got made in a bio lab and some evil scientists leaked it or, or people that worked at the, at the lab leaked it. Or the third one is like, it's just a flu dog. They just hijacked the flu. Okay, so for the past two and a half years, actually since March of 2020, um, I guess I should have added, I have 12 years experience in pandemic preparedness, planning and response. So I work for the federal government for 12 years. Which, which also, one of those three? If you had to pick which one of those three? Yeah, I'm going to tell you. So I think, and this is my opinion because I, I can't like cite sources. Because of the doctors that I've been working with for the past two and a half years, like Dr. Artis, Dr. McCullough, all these people, Dr. Um, uh, Zelenko, all these people, it resembles a blood disorder, but I, as an exposure scientist have to go off the government narrative is that is it a respiratory illness? Either way, it seems to be that it was purposeful, but more and more information is coming out that this was something that was leaked from the Wuhan lab with the gain of function stuff that Fauci has fraudulently testified on. I don't like to speculate because I'm a person of integrity, but I can just tell you the private backdoor conversations I've had with individuals is that this is not normal. Like this is not normal, like a normal coronavirus. Like this is not like a normal respiratory virus. This thing is acting differently and affecting oxygen levels, which is why they're saying it resembles a blood disorder, which thinks it was used. It was whatever it was. I, I do believe it was intentionally weaponized. Hmm. I believe it's just the flu. I believe they hijacked it. I mean, there's uh there's three theories and there's so many things that I could point out that um are evidence or um yeah, e evidence that it's just the flu. There's so many. There's so because there's there's a small well, group I, of people. I, I can agree there's, with you there. There's, I, there's I, so, I can agree with you. There's a small group of people that be like, wait a minute. All, the, all they did is just hijack the flu, right? And there's so many uh, pieces of uh, information that you could drop that uh, make you think like, man, maybe it was just the flu, you know? Because uh, first oh, of all, first of all, it was definitely planned, right? There's a pandemic. There's a documentary called The Pandemic. Like they ran uh, like simulations, like simulated simulated pandemic situations. Bill Gates funded it. They did that before it all happened, right? It's so obvious that it was planned, right? Everybody just Absolutely. every every country just automatically just jumps on board, right? Right. It's, so it was planned, right? So if yeah. it was planned. So all this shit was planned. Uh, Illuminati, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, Henry Kissinger, all those dudes. They, there was like some kind of Freemason, maybe it was a Freemason plan. There was a plan. For sure there was a plan. So if there was for sure this plan for the Great Reset, mm -hmm. there's no way they're going to wait. Like, okay, great plan. When do we go? Oh, we're just waiting for a fucking bat to spread some disease in, somewhere in China. And then we're waiting. They got this fucking plan going. They got this fucking plan, but the, the, they can't kick it off until some fucking bat releases some fucking virus that fucking takes everybody out. With, right? Well, so it can't, it can't be that one. It can't be that one, right? Common sense. If it was a plan, you're going to say it's a plan, but it's the bat. If you believe it was a plan, you cannot believe it's a bat. If you believe it's a bat, you think this was all just spontaneous and organic in nature. Right. Well, right? When, you're, when you're dealing with sociopaths, you can't even explain their behavior. But let me just tie this, because like I said, I can just theorize this is not my wheelhouse, but this is what I've been paying attention to. And that is, is that there are different flu strains. We know that, right? Like, yes, that's what tell yes you. we know that. Flu shot every year. There's different strains. So maybe this was a different strain of a coronavirus of a flu. For me, my profession came into this because, again, I have several years of this planning for how to respond to a pandemic, right? 
when they started pushing masks and remdesivir, and I'm, I'm friends with so many healthcare providers and we all know what remdesivir is doing to the body, but when they started pushing masks, but let me, let me back up a little bit. I watch a lot of TLC. It's like my, my guilty pleasure. And I watch these crazy reality shows where like people are actually get a false positive pregnancy test. And then they get all the symptoms like their stomach and their uterus actually grows. So let's think about all of the propaganda that was pushed on people. There's this deadly virus. It's novel. You're going to die. Like you're going to kill grandma. Everyone was like freaking out. So whether you had to fart or cough, you were like, oh my God, I have COVID. Like everyone freaked out. Everyone was testing for a test, not even rated to deal with this um, illness. I agree with you. I think this is a regular flu that was maybe a different strain. And then all of the propaganda cause psychosomatic increase of issues where people are like, oh my God, I can't breathe. I got to go to the hospital. And I'm not saying that people didn't die. I'm not saying that, but I know that once you checked into that hospital door, you weren't being taken care of. You were being made worse because masks are not the answer to this shit. Neither is a vaccine. So it's kind of like you were just talking about chlorine and water. Chlorine displaces vitamin C, right? So like even when my kids swim in pools, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm like, here, take some extra vitamin C because chlorine can displace vitamin C. So we knew this is how my profession works. There's a hazard. How do we control the hazard? And when the government started censoring my profession on how to control this hazard, I knew it was all bullshit. And I knew it was an illness that they wanted to capitalize off to steal the election and control the masses. And you don't need to be a conspiracy theorist to recognize this. Again, I am trained in how to handle pandemics and assess the hazard and come up with control methods. And we weren't even on the COVID task force. So what does that tell you? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So out of the three, animal, scientists leak from a lab, or is it even possible that it's just the flu and they just... Is that even possible? Who knows? Uh, so we know if it was a plan, it's not number one. It can't be an end. They can't have such an elaborate, uh, such an elaborate global plan, and they're waiting on some fucking bat or some snake or some pangolin. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's not that. That's that's, bull, that's Santa Claus shit. Uh, now the second one, if there's this plan, this worldwide uh, global reset. And they're relying on a lab to spread it and then spread it all over the world. And hopefully it spreads all over the world. Man, that's pretty fucking risky. What if it doesn't fucking, what if it's a week? Do we know this dude in fucking Wuhan, they're going to leak it and they're going to just walk around and spread it. And then we're relying on this, this to spread all over the world to kick off this great reset. Cause that's the main goal. The main goal is the great reset, right? So to me, it makes sense that it's just the flu. Like why take a chance? All you, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You just said, uh, all you need is like a health minister in China to get on TV, get any one of them corrupt ass bitches. They get up and they say, guess what? There's a new fucking coronavirus. Nobody even knows what coronavirus is. I know any, no, no one, everyone thought it was a new virus. They, they, they didn't know corona, like the flu. That's it. The, now, it the flu is, is, I don't the, think it was novel. Yeah, but, but let me ask you something. I'm no doctor. Coronavirus, there's many strains and it, that include the common cold, influenza A and B, correct? Yes. They're all, they're all coronaviruses. They're just different strains, right? Because while people had these symptoms, they were simultaneously testing them for both COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 and influenza A. Yeah, because so of coronavirus. You know that, you because, know that they no, were Is it because for, they, it was the same yes. test because they're both yes. different strains of coronaviruses, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why they call the coronavirus, right? That's, mm -hmm. and, and the flu is coronavirus? Yeah, it's a form of a coronavirus. Yeah. Colds and flus are forms of crazy. I, It's crazy. It's, there's... There's uh, doctors out there saying, no, no, the flu ain't a coronavirus. I go, the flu ain't a coronavirus. I thought the flu was a, a form of the coronavirus this whole fucking time. So when people, you know, there's people when it all came on, everyone thought it was new. Oh, new corona. Oh, my God. You hear about this new virus, corona. And then on Instagram, you'd see a guy grab a Lysol, uh, Lysol wipes, little canister, and he'd get on Instagram. And then he'd zoom in on and goes, look, it works against 
coronavirus. What? They already had it. They already had it. Oh, my God. No, coronavirus is nothing new. Just know it's not a mainstream term. You know, it's not... um, and nobody knew what coronavirus was. And the few people that did know, they go, coronavirus is just the flu and a cold. And they go, no, it's a novel coronavirus, it's a new one. It's, oh, it's a new one. Oh, so oh, novel. Oh, you, uh, you found a new one. And so all you need, oh, this is what you do. If I was running the Illuminati, I don't know what, it, maybe it was a fucking penguin. I think you'd be a great leader. I'd be, I'd go, body. listen, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, those flu tests, those PCR tests that Kerry Mullis, the dude who talks shit on Fauci all the time. Uh-huh. Let's get those tests, the ones we always use for fucking the flu. Let's take those tests. We'll, 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 we'll pay that corrupt ass uh, Chinese health minister to get on TV and say there's this new coronavirus. And man, wear a mask. This shit's fucking gnarly. It's a new one. It's a novel one. And China freaks out. They go, they just lock motherfuckers down at the snap, just snap of their fucking fingers. They just lock shit down. They lock, they're used to getting locked down. And they're all, the Chinese wearing masks all the time. They've been wearing masks forever. I go to, I go to China. They're always wearing masks. You go to Japan, Asians love fucking masks. You know what I mean? It, you know, the, the, one, the one thing masks are good for it's like, it's if especially for women, because you see mo- most most people you see on the street wearing masks today, they're women, and I yeah. get it. They're not that dumb. They're wearing it because they're too lazy certain days to put on makeup, so it's just way easier to put on one of those oh, no. N95, those big cones. Boom! You get a black one, you can look sexy in a big boom. Then makeup, that, they don't got 30 minutes. They ain't that stupid. I don't think these girls are that stupid. I think they're smart as fuck. They're wearing them so they don't have to put makeup on. But anyway, so. that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. So I, this is how we're going to do the next. I don't know how the last COVID thing happened, but this is how we're going to do the next one. Get yeah. our health minister in China. Freak everybody out in China. One person gets in front of a camera. Boom, the whole city's locked down. One person gets in front of a camera. Easy, easy. And then you kind of flash it on the news in the United States and then England around the world. That Oh, they, oh China, this one city in China. You know, they locked everybody down there, but don't worry about it. They got to contain. And then you kind of know about it. And then you, that's how you get people to believe it. It's like, it, it's not going to affect you. It's not going to affect you. It's just in China. Go on by your life and even get a politician to go up and say, oh, you guys don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. It's in China. Let's let's get on with, uh, you know, the, the task at hand. Let's fix these taxes and shit. Don't worry about that shit in China. <laughs> That's how they get you to believe it. They don't involve you. That's how all practical jokes are put together. You don't involve the victim. The victim is just a bystander, an observer. So he has no reason not to believe it. That's how they do it. You ever see that uh, that video of a guy out there? They're filming, they're pranking people out on the streets, and a guy's running around the, the, a corner on a street uh, frantically, and he's running. And the victim is is walking towards him, but he doesn't make eye contact with the victim. He just the victim just sees a guy running around the corner. It's like ah, right. And then the victim, the guy that the joke is is going to be uh, focused on, he's just walking. And then a second later, a uh, raptor, a raptor comes around the corner, <laughs> and everybody freaks the fuck out, right? But it wouldn't work if the guy ran around the corner and went to the guy and said, hey, listen, there's a raptor coming to get me. Please help me. And then he would see the raptor coming around and be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? That's how they get you. So COVID nut, don't worry about that shit in Wuhan. Don't worry about that. There's they got everybody on lockdown. And then you kind of have like a like you're you're ignoring it. The mainstream media ignores it. And then the same people I would I would get our, our street people releasing video of people just dropping dead, just dropping on the streets in China, and they put a white sheet over them, show some footage of some dudes in hazmat suits, putting people in uh, 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 like ambulances and shit. Don't put it on the mainstream media. Let it leak on social media. Ah. Make, it look, make it look like we're covering it up. We're like, oh, don't worry about it. And then people start going, dude, there's fucking people dying in time. They're dropping you see the video. Dude, you see the, check this video. Check this shit. You think it's real or fake? Check this shit. Check this shit. There's people dropping. They're like, oh, fuck, is it real? Oh, shit. How, we got to do something. Dude, we're going to, dude, it's going to spread, dude. There's people still getting on planes, dude. What the fuck? That's how they get people to believe it. Not involve them. Once they totally buy into it, and they're like, oh, 
oh shit, we just had, oh my God, we just, two people have been detected with the coronavirus from China. They're in Seattle now. Oh shit. Like, oh my God, did you hear about, there's three people. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about just two people. Just three people. Don't worry about it. Do you remember when the first one hit the US? It was like, oh my God. I remember, dude, people forget. People are so fucking stupid. One of the first motherfuckers to get it was Tom Hanks (laughs) in Australia. Remember that shit? And you know, know Tom Hanks but, and Prince William, dog, one of the princes. So one I have to tell you, got it. this is what, Eddie, I can side with you on the theory that this is just an exploited flu because I am a diehard Chicago Bears fan. And I went to London in October of 2019 with my best friend. And we were completely wasted and we were walking through this crosswalk and it was like ass to elbow busy in the middle of London. And this woman walked by me and I shit you not, she coughed into my mouth. I mean, like she coughed into my mouth. And of course I was in a whole different setting in my mind. And I told my best friend who works in the same career field as me, I was like, oh my God, I need alcohol as much as possible. Because I said, what if this woman is a bioweapon? We were joking about it. And I was really sick like nine days later for three weeks. And so if this was a flu, I got it. But you know what? That was in October of 2019. And Eddie, I have been traveling around the country since March of 2020, hugging people, sharing weed vapes, like not even caring, not social distancing. I have not been sick. And nor have I wore a stupid, useless respirator or a mask. Yeah, so that's what this is what I'm this is what I'm saying. So uh, right when so all of a sudden people are testing, they got the tests out. What tests were they using in the beginning? I wonder if that even matters. What te- does it matter? What te- oh, did they have it? What was the test? They made a test. They found a test. What test was it? It was the Carrie Mullis test for the flu. This whole time testing but, people you know, without symptoms is how you knew this shit was all bullshit. So check this out. So they called it Corona. Why didn't they call it COVID right away? They called it Corona right away. You know why? Yeah. And and this is in my um um. In my scenario, if I was running the Illuminati, it's really easy. <laughs> you were right. we, just, we call it coronavirus just until we get all the tests out because the tests say coronavirus. The tests say the te- they're coronavirus tests. They're flu tests. The flu is coronavirus, right? Is, is, is the flu is. coronavirus or not? It is. It and is it's a, a PCR strain. test. There are multiple strains. Carrie yeah. Mullis is on video saying Fauci don't know shit about nothing. You can't find a virus with this PCR test that I invented. It wasn't made to find a virus. It's made to find find dead RNA. It doesn't tell you if it's sick. It wouldn't even tell you if you were sick. It just looks for dead RNA. And yeah, at 40 and basic cycles. Chemistry. Yeah. So basic, at 40, my husband covers this. He's a public health professional. Basic chemistry shows you all these tests were used and abused and were and were used outside of their limits. So we you can fabricate anything. It's so not only like, so not only was this a flu fucking test. They were uh-huh. using for Corona because the flu was uh- Corona. That's how they got everybody. Everything your government has told you about this virus is a lie. Trust the experts. Trust the experts. Are you afraid of the flu? Don't bother me. I mean, that, that's the reality of how people perceive flu. So we really do have a problem of how the world perceives influenza. And it's going to be very difficult to change that unless you do it from within and say, I don't care what your perception is, we're going to address the problem in a disruptive way and in an iterative way, because you do need both. Make sure you wear your mask at all times, do your part. It is a federal crime. We catch you with that mask below your nose. Don't ask questions. Do what you are told. It is for your safety. We have 33 confirmed positive tests. COVID-19 in Thailand remains at 33. 33. 33. 33. 33. 33. There were 33 confirmed uh, cases in North Carolina. 33. There was 33 everywhere. I, I, yes. I, I think that was. I, would, I think that was red team go. I think 33 yes. is like yeah. red team go. Everybody goes. Okay, let's do it. It's time. <laughs> 89% until 94% of those PCR tests are false positive. It doesn't tell you that you're sick, and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. Everyone who's listed as a 
COVID death doesn't mean that that was the cause of the death. We didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate and that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is. This isn't going to be run on CNN for a week. No flu uh, to be found. You got lied to and fell for this shit. You've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin. Wearing thin. Wearing thin. Why are we being pressured to add COVID, COVID, COVID? You're exactly right. Yeah. And you are correct. I should not be giving these vaccines at all. You've been subject to propaganda and lies by people who are very well trained in how they do that. Only one person in the entire state died from the flu. So when you deny this stuff, or when you don't want to believe this stuff, you don't want to face reality, it's only hurting you. They relied on people's ignorance. Everybody sees what's going on. People woke up, ma'am. They're not looking for anybody to save them. They're saving themselves. There's your flu last year. Here's your flu this year. Literally doesn't even exist. They got everybody confused. Corona, is this what kind of, is this a COVID? It wasn't even COVID yet. So once they get the coronavirus, the flu test shipped everywhere. Everybody's on this Corona test. Now... When people pop positive, they pop positive for, they change the name to COVID-19. Now you're positive, ta- ta- uh, popping positive for COVID-19. Still the same test. It's still the same test. Set of 40 cycles. 90% false positive 40 cycles. This is a real fucking deadly disease. Why you got to manipulate the fucking numbers so goddamn much? Like if some, if they actually designed this and then they fucking evil scientists spread it, if they actually did that, that motherfucker would be hanging right now. That's a weak, he got flu numbers. He got his, his, that virus so weak, they had to take all the flu numbers and count them as COVID fucking numbers. They had to set the flu test at 40 cycles, which, which gives you 90% false positive. Dudes that weren't even sick were popping positive. What does that tell you? This is a, does it, does that, that makes, that, that makes you think like, maybe the people that the crazy people that think that it was just the flu like that there's just so much evidence so much information you start putting it all together like that if this was like dude it was like it's a real thing and it's it's different than the flu oh and it's fucking more dangerous dude why why are the numbers so weak and why well, do you gotta steal, you, steal the flu a, numbers there's a really screwed up aspect to this a lot of people don't understand so i'm cr- cross-credentialed in my field and public health and one thing that we hone in on is that technical data is not well received by people. So what do we do? We appeal to their emotions. So the one thing our tyrannical federal government did was the messaging. They they did that correctly. They pushed the propaganda. You're going to kill grandma. If you're pregnant, make sure you put this experimental jab in your body. They used emotion because that's what we're trained to do. When I was in college, that's what we did. You need to like, uh, appeal to the emotion of the individual you're trying to train. And that's what they did because technical data and science goes right over their head. But in this situation, that's what we needed. But this sounds maybe crazy to some people, but if any one in the audience female has ever used a pregnancy test, you know, you have to dispose of it after so many minutes because you'll get a positive because of the evaporation line. And this is exactly what we're doing with these PCR tests. And if you understand basic chemistry and the cycles and how it works, it's how they do it. It is designed to give you a positive. This is not a conspiracy theory. There's YouTube videos on it from people that this is their, this is their area of expertise. We had a fundamental multidisciplinary um, approach to defraud everyone in this entire country and the entire world. Because the problem is, and I keep going back to this, Eddie, because I trained on pandemic response for so long with the government. The second, remember, I worked in healthcare and hospitals during MERS, during SARS. Did we ever mask? Absolutely not. We did not wear masks for SARS CoV 1, and we did not wear masks for uh, MERS. No, we wore respirators that look like spacesuits and they're called powered air purifying respirators. We didn't use grandma's fucking curtains, something from Etsy or Old Navy. We used proper respiratory protection with forced air, with medical clearance, training and fit testing. And when the for government- the, for, the flu. Said, for the flu. Yeah, for not even the flu. For All SARS, that's the flu. Well, the SARS, 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 SARS,
Is it SARS is. a coronavirus? Yes, SARS-CoV-1. Okay, so when you have flus, SARS-CoV-1 had a higher infection rate, meaning the aerosols. Okay, we can. I don't want to get too technical, but when you're you dealing, with, you don't have to get that technical. You're, when you're uh, dealing ahead. with flus, the primary route of entry is through aerosols. Everyone's focused on these stupid droplets which land. Aerosols, like me talking right now, I'm spreading aerosols in the air. Did you know? Well, thankfully, I have an iWave air in my house, so it's killing it. But yeah, I can smell it from here. <laughs> Does it smell like fluoride and chlorine? No. Um, so anyway, like aerosols can stay suspended in the air for days. Yeah. So and we're talking about okay, when we're talking about SARS, uh, mm-hmm. all that other, and then that swine flu and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the symptoms from swine flu that are different than the flu? I don't remember the exact issues with swine flu, but I do remember it for SARS-CoV-1, which is very similar. But the reason that they differentiate these coronaviruses has to do with, it's very hard to determine how much exposure you need to something before you're infected. So they rely on how long can the illness survive in the ambient air. And we know that the SARS-CoV-2 can survive two days, two to five days in the air. And that's a coronavirus too? It is, yes. Okay, so these are all cur- different strains of coronavirus. They sure are. Man, if I was running the Illuminati dog, I would, dude, we'd just come up with a fucking and you know what's a funny? novel coronavirus dog. We'll call it fucking uh, uh, monkey flu or some shit. <laughs> monkey you know, flu. Dude, it's so easy. Like, whether all that is like, like to me, I just think like all those things are just the flu. You know, the flu kills you. I'm not saying it's not going to kill you. The flu is always taking out people with multiple co- comorbidities. Uh, that's everybody knows that you learned that in, in, in sixth grade. Uh, everybody had a grandma or an or aunt or uncle. They had cancer, diabetes, something, some kind of like, and then they, the flu wipes them out. Pneumonia wipes, wipes them out. A cold wipes them out. The flu. Wipe, so everybody knew that you just didn't put that down on the death certificate you put down cancer you put down you didn't put down he died of the flu yes he died of the flu the flu took him out but it was only because what historically what did we do when people had the flu you'd be out with girlfriends i don't know maybe you were out with girlfriends guy friends whatever and you'd be like oh karen she's sick. oh let's hope she has soup and water and this and that when people got the flu what did people push um, Campbell soup Vitam- and orange juice. Yeah, soup, hydration. Oh shit, I was just joking. Vitamins. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Hydration. Yeah. Liquids. Yeah. And when there's not vitamins. an agenda, it, when it, when they, when when it's not needed, when when the when, the, when uh, the flu is not needed, to me it just seems like they just use the flu to do some shit. Like oh because shit, root, we need, root we need cause, another. We need root another. Root cause control was abandoned. Root cause control was abandoned, and that's how you know this is bullshit. So is you think it's possible for me? I'm fucking insane. I'm thinking like, dude, they know all. They know that every season there's different forms of coronavirus. They just lump them all into one coronavirus, but it's basically the same symptoms over and over. It's the same goddamn. Sy- when you have the flu, it's horrible. It's fucking yeah. death. When you have the flu, but you know you're going to be all right. You know it's just the flu. So you you, you you stay at home. You feel like shit. You can't get up. You can barely get up. And you got, you're, you're squirting out your asshole. You're projectile vomiting all over the place. Uh, you feel like hell. You feel, it feels like fucking hell. Yep. But you know you have the flu. You're trying to eat some soup. You, you, you drink some orange juice, you know it's the flu. So mentally, you know it's the flu and you're not going to die. Even though you feel like you're going to die. The flu, you actually feel like you're going to fucking die. Because if you had the flu and and then some doctor came in and he's insane and he goes, damn, you got a rare form of cancer and you don't have that much time to live. Imagine how you would feel. You have the flu and then now you think you have some rare cancer and that's going to take you out and you're about to die. Imagine, so imagine... How you breathe, you breathe, you think your breathing would change? Would you be like, <sighs> your breathing would fucking change. Like if, like, if, like every night you go to bed when you, it's when at three in the morning, probably 99.99% of the time, three in the morning, you're asleep and you're breathing. 
you, you probably snore, so you're like this. Is that how you sleep? <laughs> <clears throat> I snore too. So there's a certain way we breathe. At three in the morning, we're four in the morning, we're dead asleep. I'm on gummy. So if I you sleep. got home invaded, if you got home invaded, you hear someone fucking break down the door and start shooting shit, and you're like, oh fuck, we're being home invaded. Nobody's t- nobody has touched you. People. Nobody has touched you. You didn't go. You didn't start running laps. You didn't do uh, squats. You'd be hiding in your closet. And what would your breathing sound like? Would you be all smooth? Would it sound like the way you usually uh, breathe when you're sleeping? Like, <sighs> no, I'd be like, you'd be you'd yeah. be motherfucking hyperventilating. You just got home invaded. You never taken a martial art in your life. You don't have a gun. You are going to be fucking panicking. Well, I'm panicking like well, it's I'm the end it. of the fucking world. <laughs> right? So yeah. imagine you have the flu and then you watch CNN all day and you believe it's some fucking crazy disease. Well, it's so crazy. We got to shut down the fucking entire world. We got to crush it. Imagine you believe that and now you have a good old fashioned flu. Damn, that's COVID. That's COVID right there. Psychosomatic symptoms are very real. And that's why I'm not trying to lessen people that died. But did they die from the illness or did they die from the lack of treatment, the deadly treatment, and the fear and panic? Because it's like, Eddie, if I was your doctor and I said, Eddie, you have intestinal cancer, you'd be like, damn, my stomach hurts. Think about it. Yeah. It's like when a woman finds out she's pregnant, you're like, oh, my boobs hurt. Like you start getting the symptoms even if like it's false, like psychosomatic is huge. Yeah. That's, like, there's a lot of people that can fake illnesses because they were improperly diagnosed. Yeah. I'm yeah. not trying to lessen the situation, but we totally use propaganda to flip the script and invoke fear. And I really believe a lot of, think about how many people did not need to go to the ER because they were like, oh my God, I took this useless home test from Amazon. And I'm like, I had, I just kind of had a cough and a little bit of a headache and fatigue. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's positive. Oh my God. Like, you know, like people freak the fuck out. And then what cracks me up is people that quarantine in their bedrooms. <laughs> I'm like, you're, you literally are on the same HVAC system. If you have the flu, you're going to spread it unless you're in a paper bag, which I don't recommend. But I mean, we did everything wrong. I'm not making light of the situation, but we fucked up everything from day one. And that's was it why inc- it was up. it incompetence or it was, was it a no. new world order agenda? New world order. They definitely knew. Okay, okay now we're on the same page. Government tra- so. The government trained me to respond to this. Let me give you an example. When I, li- when I worked at a VA hospital in the city of Chicago, I had the contract under a memorandum of agreement to manage the decontamination line in the city of Chicago in the event of a pandemic or chemical, radiological, biological, nuclear threat. Me. Did we wear masks? Absolutely not. And do you want to know why I trained people to show why we didn't wear masks and we wore powered air purifying respirators? There's something called, I think it's called germ glow. It's a powder that's invisible to the naked eye. And I would put it on the dummies because we would do exercises in triage patients. And because we had to decon them to get care, right? So I would put this powder on the dummies. And I told people, if you're wearing a mask, do not touch your face or your eyes. Do not touch your face or your eyes. The second you do that, your mask is useless, which by the way, is only designed for droplets. At At the end of these exercises, we went into a black white room. The powder's in their hair. It's in their, it's on their eye. It's on their mask. This is why I told people, when you're dealing with aerosolized infectious diseases or unknowns, you don't wear a mask. You need full ocular eye and you need respiratory protection. You need a respirator because in an emergent situation, like you having facial hair, you wouldn't be able to wear a tight fitting respirator. I'd give you this hood that looks like a spacesuit. Like if you've ever looked at pictures of, um, like for example, I'm ISO certified in laboratories, which means I inspect BSL-4 labs, like labs in Ukraine that have like all this crazy shit. I inspect those labs. So those people wear powered air purifying respirators and control their purifying respirators. They don't wear useless cloth on their face, which have a less than 1% efficacious risk reduction. Now, when you were wearing those, when you were wearing those big ass hazmat suits, what was it? What were you trying to protect yourself from getting? 
the un, when there's an unknown hazard, because it could be a contact hazard, like alpha radiation is skin. If it's a biological or blister agent, we need to protect our skin. So when it's for an sure. unknown I get hazard. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever have to wear one of those hazmat suits for a, cor- a coronavirus? No. It's, no, oh, no, no. It's just for like super serious shit. Like you it's got for a room with anthrax or something. You got to, yeah, you got to have a hazmat. But for like a coronavirus, would you need to wear that thing you talked about? No, you know what we do with people that have aerosolized infectious diseases? We put them in isolation units that have engineering controls that are either negative pressure or positive pressure. No, I'm talking about like if you were going to do something uh-huh. or, or have you ever had to wear one of those suits to make sure you don't get a coronavirus? No, because the okay. patients were in a room where it sucked all the aerosols out of the breathing zone. Or maybe, who gives a fuck if I get a cold? I'm a human being. Every now and then I'm going to get a cold. Is that why you didn't wear them? Yeah, it's like if it's a corona, like you never had to defend yourself or put on a hazmat suit to protect yourself from a coronavirus in any situation. Like, oh my God, there might be a coronavirus somewhere in this room or around here. Let me wear a hazmat suit. No, because it wasn't a contact hazard. It was an inhalation hazard through aerosols, which go into the deep lungs. So when we had a known, like for me, I have to air sample during surgeries or I have to air air sample in isolation units to make sure that the negative pressure air exchangers are proper. Right. For sure. Hey, if I was, if I went into one of these military bases and they said, we got some fucking radiation shit, you, you'd see me, I'd wear two fucking hazmat suits. I hope it's yellow. I would wear all that shit. They said, Oh dude, this shit gets in your lungs and it blisters your lungs. I'm like, dude, can I get five suits? I'm I'm down with that. I'm just talking about coronaviruses. If you wouldn't like, they wouldn't say, oh, there might be a new coronavirus around here. Let's get in a hazmat suit, right? No. They wouldn't do it. Because it's what is a fucking flu, so what? What's the worst that could happen, right? Right? I'll explain something to no you. No one freaks out over a coronavirus, right? Me being on your on your show right now, my profession. This is what people don't know, and this is what should piss them off. My profession. We are the experts in exposure control. So when there's a hazard, you don't go to a virologist, you don't go to a a public health professional, you don't go to a Fauci, you go to an industrial hygienist. We are the ones that it's an upside down pyramid. At the top, it says substitute or elimination. You can't substitute or eliminate it. But after that is engineering. We have dilution, destruction, and filtration technologies that can kill greater than 98% of mold bacteria and viruses. And in my profession, when there's a hazard, whether it's biological, radiological, infectious disease, we have to strive for a risk reduction method that has 90%. You know what has 90%? Just increasing the air exchanges in your grocery store. You ever had surgery? What about bleach? Like bleach kills all that, right? Uh, it, not necessarily because then you create a secondary hazard of the inhalation of the bleach. But Eddie, have you ever had surgery? Uh, too many. Transgender? No. When you're wheeled into surgery, I'm if you're still awake, that. when you're wheeled into surgery, if you've ever been awake while you're still in the operating room, do you notice how windy it is and cold? No. Well, I'm sure someone watching has been awake and you will notice that it is windy and cold. And do you want to know why? Because someone from my profession went in there and made sure that there were increased air exchanges per hour and the temperature was cold so that any issues of infectious diseases was lifted out of the breathing zone. The use of masks during surgery is the most useless thing ever. And there are studies that say that is not needed. Because most but it's for like, you don't want someone like spitting into the wound. I would say, that I have my doctor, I go, you're going to cut me up, wear a fucking one of them N95s, dog. That's a I respirator. Go, call you. That's, okay, so the only reason people wear masks in surgery is for bacteria, not viruses, bacteria. But you know what I mean? Like if, if someone, you're, you're working over an open wound, huh? a mask seems like a good idea. I don't want spit going right. into my, my wound. If you're just in a, if you're in a private doctor's room, a mask would stop large droplets from getting into your wound. When you're in a surgical suite, you are dealing with increased air exchanges that are changing so much that there's so much air exchanges that all the hazards are lifted out of the breathing zone. Now, if someone's going to vomit in the middle of your surgery, yes, you're going to want like a face shield or a mask. That is the only thing that masks are designed to do is to stop large droplets, not yes. aerosols, yes. which are the primary route of exposure of most infectious diseases that are inhaled. 
Yeah. But still, yes. So I get it. Mask won't stop the flu. Right? So Not at all. It's you just the flu why? anyway. So it doesn't why, why would I why would I wear a mask to avoid a cold? You know what Do I mean? You, know, like, like, you just you got to live your life. Sense. You're going to walk around with a goddamn mask. Oh, I don't want to get the flu. I don't want to get a cold. I don't want to get the flu. I'm going to wear a mask all day so I don't get the cold. I'm... Um, They're increasing the spread. People that wear masks for this thing going around, people that wear masks for COVID-19 are increasing the spread through self and cross-contamination. The spread of a cold or the flu. Yes. Yeah. Because let me tell you, you know where the six foot rule got pulled out of someone's ass? Because when you cough, the trajectory of aerosols is projected to be six feet. However, the primary route of exposure of respiratory illnesses like the flu and COVID-19, whatever strain of flu it is, is through the inhalation of aerosols into the deep lung. The six foot rule is BS. Um, we, why, why, why did the flu disappear? It's called viral load. The flu when disappeared you, because of viral load. So, so remember, it, it, so, so when, the there's, when there's people out there, the small little crazy group of people that say is they just do, they just, the scam was they just switched the flu. They called it coronavirus until they got all the tests out. And then when all the tests were out, they changed it to COVID-19 and they, they never changed the test. It's the same fucking test. People, the people that say that when they get the, the data that, oh, guess what? The flu disappeared. In 2020, that can you see how that's they like? Yeah, like, and you know oh, they shit. say, oh, it's because no, we're no wearing shit. masks. No, and then yeah, and then, and then the response to that, the people, viral pressure. Yeah, viral they'll, pressure they'll, they'll say, viral. they'll say, I don't know, maybe it's that what you're saying. I don't no. know. I didn't know there was a name for it. But I'm a core credential credential expert on this topic. So people would say, <laughs> people will say, oh, the flu disappeared because of the mass. Mm -mm. That's what they say. They say, but know, and they go, wait a minute. If the flu disappeared because of the mask, why didn't COVID disappear because of the mask? Using the same goddamn test, say it's a fucking coronavirus, same test, same symptoms. Whoa. You know what? Same numbers. It's the same goddamn numbers. What's the average age of death of COVID? When they, at first, everybody going to get it. They got everyone to believe, like everyone's dropping in those videos. Everyone's dropping yeah. in China. So everybody thought when, when the lockdown hit, everybody thought people were going to be dropping on the streets downtown. People thought that shit. I didn't think that shit. I, I, I knew it was bullshit from day one. But everybody was, was convinced that it was real and people were going to start dropping. And uh, they closed fucking beaches. They closed a fucking, you could, they closed everything. People don't ever forget that lockdown. They closed that. Oh, I, I had it the worst. But, 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 but <laughs> at first, this thing was going to fuck everybody up. Uh -huh. Shut your business down. People are going to start dropping on the sidewalk like like those videos from China. We're going to put a white sheet over our motherfuckers, throw them in our ambulances and shit. That's what people thought. Then when the initial data came out, they're like, do you know the average age of people dying is 81? Higher than the average life expectancy in the fucking country. It's 81. And it coincidentally, that's like the flu too. Flu takes out old people and then they find out old people with comorbidities. Like, oh. When they give them remdesivir, it sure as shit doesn't help either. So Totally, totally. Well, that's a whole different level but um so then it became like oh, okay okay the data was out it was undeniable now we gotta go if you if you uh if you uh um uh resist the covid rules and um uh, rebel then you don't care about old people what about old people what about your grandma what about your aunt you don't care about old people i don't care about old people like all of a sudden it became an old people thing you and, and then if you if you ignored the covid rules you didn't care about old people you're gonna kill i couldn't have that on my conscience of an old like all of a sudden you care about old people since when have you motherfucking cared about old people now well, it's all public about shaming they don't they give a change. fuck about old people. They don't give a f the, the people, the controllers, they don't give a fuck about old people. You know why they don't give a fuck bit. about old people? Because they were killing them. They're luckily. Exactly. It's the, luckily, not only don't they care, but it's out. pretty obvious. They don't, they don't mind killing a lot of people. They, they just do not mind that shit. You know, pushing, they're, they're, they're going to push this new booster that's coming out. There's a new booster, no human trials. They're going to go and push this shit after all the data has been coming out. All the data on the, on the, on, uh, uh, 
1,200 side effects with these japs, heart attacks, SADS, SADS, sudden adult death syndrome. Are you fucking kidding me? Remember, cold showers can cause myocarditis. Climate change is causing SADS, sudden adult death syndrome. People, I, everybody know, everybody knows people that have died of heart attacks all of a sudden in their sleep. Everybody, I know a few people personally that have died. People are dying from the jab, and and now they're gonna drop this new fucking booster like next week or something, and they're trying to push it on children. They not only don't they give a fuck about us, they want us in, they want us fucked up. They want us, they definitely want us fucked up. Big farmers running all this shit. They the more people that are fucked up and need pills, you know, the better. They know if they fuck everybody up, a lot of them are gonna die anyways if they have weak immune systems. They get it. They 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 they're they're not sure. You think they're fucking shocked that people are dying? They're like, yeah, yeah, the weak people, they're gonna die, you know. Uh, but uh, the people that live, they're gonna be fucked up for their whole life and they're gonna they're gonna be customers for their whole life. I'm giving you all the tracks you become you gotta make the playlist. All right, I'm just showing you all the different songs. You, you uh, arrange them the way you want. That's all it is. So when you're playing quarter guard, you only have one way. You can go dogfight, or you could go deep half stuff. You could do that shit too. Like if I have this right here, I can go to dogfight. Right, I can go from up here and attack. This is like a tug of war grip right here. This is a burrito grip, bam, here. And then from here, so to get that under, he's not letting me get the under, but if I can get a hold of a two-on-one burrito grip here and then shoot up and pin it and get up on my elbow here, and then I'm gonna go bam and just dive in and grab this. And then once I'm here, I'm gonna half plex him, make him base, and then bring that knee up, boom. If you can't get the lockdown, fuck it, but you got quarter guard, get that underhook. Start battling the wrist. Get that up, boom. Did that help? Okay. With vaccines, there's no liability for the manufacturer. Are, Can you, you believe that? Can you? I don't know that? if you knew this about me. In my 20s, I was on active duty in the Air Force, and they were pushing the HPV vaccine, Gardasil. I had a stroke. I had a stroke in my 20s, and it has screwed up the rest of my med medical care. I'm 40 now, so it screwed up my medical care because of my medical history. I can't do so many things because I survived a stroke. I got a stroke from Gardasil. It's highly documented in my VA records, and thank God it is because I have been able to bypass all the attempted mandates with this illegal experimental jab. Absolutely not because I have already had a stroke. So all these people, like I cannot go on Twitter and not see like this person, 28 years old, drop dead. Like yeah, it's all over people the place. do die every day, but people do not die of cardiac issues every single day, unless they're just like slinging energy drinks or something. It makes no sense. And how long are we going to go? I don't know if you go into open bears. That's what I look at. Openbears.com covers all of the stuff that's not being reported in the mainstream mafia. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I mean by, um, the controller's not giving a fuck about anybody. They don't, they nobody don't care. cares. People think they, because this whole scamdemic was based on them caring about our health. It was the, the whole thing was about health. It was Look at this health, impression of health, my health, And the last fucking thing they care about is our health. They want us unhealthy. They don't want us to die. Absolutely. Uh, like if we, they, like they, they'd rather have us all fucked up. Easy to control. Easy. When you're when you're injured, oh, we're so easy to control. When we're hooked on uh, pharmaceuticals, oh, easy to control. But when remember, when you get your eighth booster, you can get a whole box of Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. I mean, come on. How dumb are people? How dumb <laughs> are like people? It's like fucking for virginity. Like it makes no sense whatsoever. Like my my br it's not funny. It's like what it's virginity? Funny. What did you say? Fucking for virginity. Fucking for virginity. Yeah. Like to sit there and and Okay, give it doesn't something. make sense. Okay. Yes. I mean I hope not. Like I, it doesn't make any sense. Unless you're like a oh, born again, born again. <laughs> But, you know, it's just that's what I'm saying is that the government cannot seem to keep their nasty hands out of my profession. Like, I don't enjoy being in the spotlight on these issues, but I'm credentialed to speak out on them. And that's why I've been fighting all these mandates how I beat it in the Supreme Court. Like, it is insane to me how we're doing everything backwards. It's kind of like 
telling people instead of being smart how to avoid pregnancy, oh, just get an abortion every time you're pregnant, you know, while I need that tissue. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like the point is, is like, why if you have to get in front of the issue, root cause, root cause control, source control. That's what we need. We're not controlling anything at the source. If we were, we would be telling people, hey, if you have these following symptoms, You don't need the government tell you to stay home. So what I was what I was telling you earlier is I live in the People's Republic of Michigan. I think we have the worst government governor in the United States because many people do not know what happened to us when we were shut down. Whitmer. Oh, yes. Is that her? Yes. That's the one, the one we something that did she get kidnapped or something? Oh, that was bullshit. And I actually have firsthand information on that. That's all bullshit. I can't even believe that whole court case. But anyway, that's for a different podcast. But if you want to talk about it, go for it. Our governor told us we couldn't leave our houses. Now, mind you, I keep pushing engineering controls. You know what is the most inexpensive engineering control? Dilution and cross ventilation, which means open your windows, go outside. We were told we couldn't go to playgrounds. I live on the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. We couldn't go to the beach, you know, where we have yeah. fresh air Insane. and a lot Insane. of natural air exchanges. No, we needed to stay home. Have you ever heard the term, like when kids go back to school, everyone gets sick? Have you heard of the saying cubicle syndrome? Like everyone's kind of pushed in like sardines and everyone yeah. gets sick because of the shitty air. That's this. So people got sick in their homes and they if you left your house, if you left your house without going to a doctor's appointment or a grocery store, you got a ticket. My yeah. niece was pulled over on the way to the store and on the way back from the store and got ticketed twice because they didn't believe her. I cannot make this shit up. This is the state that I live in. You couldn't buy paint. If you had a crack in your bathtub that you had to fix uh, uh, leaky pipes, you had to bring a f- a photograph to the hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards. I don't know if you know what Menards is, but it's one of those. You had to bring a picture to show a manager to be allowed to buy caulk and plumber's tape. You buy caulk? Caulk's been free since the caveman times. Well, you know what I mean? Like, why would you, who buys you that? Couldn't, you couldn't buy the most basic things to control issues in your home. If you had a failed pump sump, you, could, you couldn't buy a car seat. A car seat. Because you shouldn't be out driving anyway. Yeah. See, that's, uh, you did not during all that crazy shit. Can't go to the beach. You got to stay home. Everything's fucking closed. We're <laughs> training jujitsu in secret and shit. During, during all that, um, I was having get togethers at my house. I was like, come get me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, cause I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I already have, I have a $500 thing on my HVAC system in my house called an iWave Air, and I get no money promoting that. It will kill virus, bacteria, and mold in my house. It's helped so much with our seasonal allergies. I had that installed on my HVAC system. We didn't get sick in my house. <laughs> uh, uh, during the first couple months, man, I was furious. I was I was pretty damn vocal. I was fucking furious. But now looking back, we had to go through all this shit. You know, I'm I don't know how many times I've been on Joe Rogan talking about New World Order on Alex Jones show, you know, Alex talking about a New World Order, New World Order, One World Government. That's what they're trying to do and everyone thought we were crazy. So, for the New World Order to finally emerge and be right in front of everyone's faces and yes. uh I look at it now like, "Oh, you know, uh, we need to see this. We need to walk through the fire. How else are we going to convince? There's still people that don't even see it. So without going through this, there's no way we, we would have been able to wake people up because still there's still zombies out there. But you know what? Every day, I, you know, all the dumb shit they do, like Biden, like looking like he's fucking like uh, Darth Vader and shit. Like it, they, it just like every time something like that happens, three or four more people wake up. You know what I mean? Every now and then there's a new celebrity that that has some balls. And then another one, look, look what Bill Maher, Bill Maher's fucking waking up. Look at the, um, Jimmy Dore. And, and I don't know. I don't Jim know. Dore, what the, Rob I, Schneider. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Rob Schneider has always been anti-vax. He's, he's, he's a bad motherfucker. I love that. And look at the Jim Brewer coming yes. out, you know, they're slowly in Joe Rogan. He's that's people are, are slowly waking up and, and um, 
So I think we need to just keep, maybe we need another lockdown or two. Pete, we can't go back to normal. Now I used to think, I went, wait, can't we go back to normal? Fuck normal. Now looking back, like, man, this is necessary. I we got to fix it. We got to fix this shit now. So let's keep it going. Let's keep, let's, so now I'm like, I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying the fact that this is the only way it, it's going to work. Because if we just go, go back to normal, going back to normal, man, everybody was asleep. And everyone's a zombie. We can't go back to normal. I look at old like videos from the nineties, like whether it's a music video or a movie or in the two thousand. I look back and I'm like, wow, that's when everybody was asleep. That looks like the Matrix to me. Like looking at nineties movies and eighties stuff. Like man, everybody was captured. I was captured. I was man. They had me. They, they had me good. They got me real good. They, you know. Um, Man, they love broken families. They do everything. They greenlight any project that will break up a family. And um, um, uh, and my family was as broke as you can get. And uh, my mom, she did a great job trying to raise three kids, you know, with $150 a week. But me and my brother, we're on the streets hustling, you know, and um, trying to survive. And uh, wanted to be a rock star. They, they captured me. I saw Kiss on TV, and I'm like, I want to be a rock star. I want to have uh, everyone screaming for me. I want to have uh, a thousand girlfriends and beautiful girls all around me. <laughs> I wanted to live like a rock star. Like that was, they got me good. Oh man, mission fucking complete with me. They got me good. Moved to Hollywood, you know. Uh, me and James trying to be rock stars, trying to date as many girls as I could. Uh, they got me good. You know, there was no way I would um, ever look at the conservative way of life. I, to me, like Republicans and conservatives, like, look at them. They're wearing, like, if you saw an 18 year old Republican, you, oh, he's got to be wearing a suit with a red tie and he's all into going to church. He goes, I'm trying to party over here. I'm in my 20s. We're going to, we're partying and just, I work at strip clubs and we're just trying to just live like rock stars, getting drunk all the goddamn time and smoking weed, doing whatever, ecstasy. I did all that shit. I was, I was out of fucking control and they got me good. You know, and, and I thought, I thought I was, um, wasn't captured. That was the crazy thing is I thought being captured would be uh Republican conservative, go to church, get a family, get married, have kids, uh, get into Jesus and God, um, family first. Um, uh, I, you know, he'll be, look at them hillbillies, you know what I mean? They're all rednecks. You know, I, I want to party and have fun and, um, you know, go to the, like the big cities, you know, LA, New York, Miami, London, party, party, <laughs> party, you know what I mean? So they got me good. It took it. I thought I was, you know, um, wild and uncaptured. I, but I wasn't. They got me good. They had, they had me thinking I was free, living the free. But that's exactly what they wanted to create. And <clears throat> so uh, now I look at things a lot different. You know, family is first. You know, I'm, uh, all I care about is um, making sure that uh, my son has the best life possible. And um, how old is he now? He's ten. Oh my gosh. I remember. I think we met when he was just a little tiny little nugget. Maybe like one or something like uh, that. <laughs> when did you do my podcast that last time? Oh, 2013, I think. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was one. He was, uh, he's born in 2012. But yeah. <clears throat> so now I look at, uh, now I agree with a lot of conservative values. I've never voted. I've, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm a, uh, common, common sense -akin, you know, half Mexican, half common. You know, sense. What I, you know what I call myself? A currentist. <laughs> what does that mean? Because I actually agree with anarchist and voluntarist ideologies, but if I have to be thrown into a party, you could call me libertarian. I'm a big Ron Paul person. I got a Ron Paul revolution. I love Ron Paul. I love Ron Paul. But I call myself jokingly a currentist because a lot of people will be like, oh, you preach all this like anti-government stuff, which by the way, is not a peaceful way. I believe in self-governance. But I also know that the ideology I support is not going to exist mainstream. So if I'm going to have a ruler, I want these rulers to be pro as pro-freedom as possible. So I call myself a currentist because I use the existing government systems and my rights to support people who are going to preserve or increase my individual liberty. Like, for example, I'm suing two huge corporations right now. So I'm using the current system 
to fight for my rights that were violated. So I call myself a currentist as a joke because I hate labels. I just believe as long as you are not harming me or my property, you can do whatever the hell you want. I love it. I love it, man. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about NASA? Do you think there's any corruption there? I don't know necessarily corruption, but I am very familiar with a lot of the psyops involved with whether, you know, like I know you believe in the flat earth and whether or not the moon landing happened. I think that's why I say like, I you believe we with- landed on the moon. If, 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 if you do, I'm a if different you do, because I'm not going to be I, mad at you. No, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm just, I'm more, I'm just curious. I'm more leaning towards no, because I tend no, to not no, argue. No, we didn't. We faked it. No, we did not. Okay. I lean. Okay. So I do not argue issues that I have not researched, but this one, like I've seen Buzz Aldrin with his talking to that child, like shit just doesn't make sense. I have seen the arguments. That's what I, I pride myself in the fact that I don't bash, like for example, the flat earth theory, I don't necessarily believe it, but I haven't researched it enough because I've been talking to the flat earth millionaire is what he calls himself. Yeah. I've been talking to a lot of people that believe this. I do not argue issues that I have not researched, but when it comes to NASA, I have to put myself in the mindset of why do we lie about things? And I think because I think our country has a narcissistic undertone that we have to be the first at everything. I just think that there's a lot of cringe things I have found that make me think we did not. Like uh, what? Like off the top of your head, give me two or three things. Like things that show proof of green screen. Uh, again, like I told you, Buzz Aldrin, whether he's got dementia or what, just flat out saying like, oh, it didn't happen. Um, and just wh- why, if we went there, why, why don't we go back? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, again, the Model T Ford was invented, we didn't stop there. So why, if we went to the moon, have we not gone to other places or gone again? Okay. Um, yeah. Things that I just... Once you understand that the government lies nonstop, this is what I'm agreed with you about how COVID kind of need to happen minus the loss of life through fraudulent control measures and therapies. This was the best thing that could happen to we, the people, because you and I have been following all this bullshit for so long, but a lot of people never knew about 9-11 truth. They never knew about all the bullshit that's going on in the world. And it's like, damn, once you open Pandora's box, you can't, you know, it's a rabbit hole you can't come out from. And once you realize the government did this, if they can steal an election and scare everyone to thinking we're all going to die. So we just do mail in votes that they can just hijack through ballot harvesting. What else are they capable of doing and why? And that's what we have to focus on. And how it's long have like, they been doing this? Did they just exactly, start? exactly. Yeah. It's kind of like if a spouse cheats and they say, Oh, I'm going on a work trip. You just not going to check in on them and check their Google Maps and your Snapchat or, location. Or, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, <laughs> or you know, um, you know that theory of uh, if you see one roach, there's probably a hundred. Exactly. Right? So, and, I, and I, I don't mind being called a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm a conspiracy realist. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're very smart and I'm very impressed. You're very articulate. You're smooth. You should have your own podcast. You really should. I, I've, I have actually, I've been offered several, but you know, I'm at a point now in my life where things are a little bit dying down, but too honestly, busy? too busy. I have been donating my time, giving expert testimony in court cases all over this country and testifying in state legislative bodies. Um, like I in said, regards we to what, like vaccines, mandates, and mask and vaccine mandates. Yeah. You're fighting. Look at and you. not only that, but like custody issues, I have been doing expert testimony in court for years, whether it's workers compensation because someone got cancer because they didn't have the proper respirator, things like that. Um, but I never thought I would be embedded in, in, uh, doctors getting their licenses back, people getting custody back of their children. Like I literally had a situation where a mom was having her kids sleep. And and ninety five respirators. <laughs> yeah, that is. And I and and I have not charged a single dime for any of this yet. I'm called a grifter. <laughs> Love it. Have you uh, have you um, are you interested in <clears throat> like the Tartarian theory and all that stuff? No, I'm not familiar with it, but I've I've watched your show since you've come on. Uh, on uh, your platforms and uh, I'm, I'm like I gotta dig into that he keeps he keeps citing that and I don't I'm not familiar with it oh man it's it's um there's so many layers to it basically 
nobody knows anything for real, uh, for sure, obviously. We're just we're trying to figure it all out. But it seems based on all the structures that are all over the world, even the United States, there's all these structures, old stru- We got ruins here all over the United States. And there's levels to ruins because they got us all. What's mainstream in regards to ruins? Egypt, the pyramids, the Sphinx, like that kind of, like Stonehenge, that kind of stuff. And then you find out Stonehenge is man-made, total fraud. But then the pyramids, they want, you know, they get, they blow the pyramids up, pyramids everywhere. And that takes you away that that from the lower levels of that technology. Like for sure, the pyramids, like who the fuck build them? built them and people are fascinated with them. Yeah. Like, did they have like did, scissor lifts? Yeah, and, like, did like, aliens, did aliens, uh, <laughs> build them or, or there's, there's, they got little jet packs to just build them up. Yeah. There's theories where like the slaves knew how to roll stones on logs and they just had logs. And there's that theory. There's the alien theory. And then there's the theory that, Oh, they, back then they knew they had harnessed, uh, free energy and they mastered, magnetism and they use that to move the stones or whatever okay. um but that's like 10 ooh, is it forty thousand years old they're, they're, they keep you in the you, you have to text them. me some of this information i'm always I willing will. to learn I because will. like i said i do not bash things i do not know but i'm always yeah, so, absorb information i like to learn so, so what the tartarian theory is there's a lot of levels to it but in an, in a nutshell based on what i've seen so far and i'm no expert um you want to follow john levi on uh youtube J-O-N, my friend you talk about him yeah J-O-N, that guy he's got he's been he's been on it for a few years he's got so many videos he makes a bunch of videos he's basically just um finding ruins everywhere the ruins are everywhere they want you to focus on egypt but there's different levels of ruins there's like like you know every city has got like some buildings a building here a building there that see that like it's like a cathedral or a castle or something and you you know you think like oh you know oh we could build that you know that's not like the pyramids the pyramids we can't build it's like the og roblox and minecraft (laughs) Uh, it's, it's, it's just high tech building, like master okay. building, but okay. we're so focused on Egypt and those pyramids that when you look at masterpieces and incredible structures, um, that are maybe not as, in, they're not as incredible as the pyramids, but there's levels. There's, there's these, there's buildings all over the place that, uh how who built them what year did they build them they built in the 1800s it seems like it seems like this is in a nutshell and this i'm going to sound very retarded but it seems like what w- there's great resets often and yeah. the m- mainstream will tell us that we were horse and buggy for tens of thousands like since the beginning of time we were horse and buggy technology uh, the year uh, uh, 2000 BC, 3000 BC, the year zero, the year 100 AD, uh, 800 AD, 1200 AD, still horse and carriage, 1300, 15, 1600, 1800. And then finally, like in 1905, we figured out how to uh, harness some electricity and, and make a car. Uh, uh-huh. that we're, 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 that's what we're taught to believe. We didn't have none of that shit. And, t- and then Tesla, Nikola Tesla, this is going to be a crazy theory. Uh, Nik- Nikola Tesla, we think, oh, he's the guy who is going to give us free energy. But Thomas Edison, they were battling, they were rivals. And he stole all of Nikola Tesla's ideas. And Nikola Tesla died penniless and insane. He was going to give us free energy. The, the conspiracy theory is we already have free energy. Nikola Tesla, Tesla was just a distraction. Well, they, had, they had free energy in the 1800s. So you look at all these structures all over the world. There was an a, um, a empire called Tartaria, and it's all in the old maps. They wiped it out of our history. You'll, you, you won't go into any book, in any uh, schools, and, know, and, find, and read anything on Tartaria. But you look at all these old maps, the empire of Tartaria. There was an empire that was wiped out. They had free like, – this is just me rambling. Uh, they had free energy. They knew – and did you know bricks, red bricks, conduct electricity? Did you know that? 
No, I did not know that. Yeah, they conduct electricity. You could Google it. We were, I was on Jerry the other day and I brought it up to Joe. I've, 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 I've talked about this on Joe's a little bit, but the Tartarian theory is like there's these pa- these palaces, like you see them in India, you see them in Vietnam. There's all these palaces and they have these lightning rod things. Like they, it looks like just architecture, but those light, they're like these rods. Maybe they have something to do with harnessing free energy from just the air and the bricks that these built the reason people built with bricks is to harness the energy so they already had free energy 1800s they have a great reset they they demolish everything and then they start over and now we're cowboys and indians now and like basically it's looking like that cowboys and indians western shit was just part of the story. It's just like evolution, just like cavemans. That's what it's looking like. It's looking like when you start looking at all these old pictures of um, any old pictures from like the 1800s, like old, uh, like late 1800s, early 1900s. There's so many pictures of like these insane buildings. They're not pyramids. So you, when you see them, you're like, oh yeah, we could build them, but we ain't building them no more. Who's building them? Who knows how to build these fucking castles? In the United States, there's castles all over the United States. And yeah. they're, telling us, they're telling us in 1860 that we had, uh, we it was the Wild West and, and people were coming in wagons and shit. And then uh, Salt Lake City was founded like in the 1800, like 1860 or something like that. And well, let me ask it, you. It came on wagons, and but there, there was already these fucking castles here. There was already castles. Look at this. They, like, oh there's God. all this shit that we think, oh, somebody could build that, but nobody's building that. So we're we're hypnotized with the the pyramids. It's so we detailed, got, dude. It's dude. It, it, they, oh, they, I, you gotta send me a link yeah, or something to get me down this rabbit yeah. hole because I'm interested. But I have a question for you. So. Yeah. I'm a former radiation safety officer, so I've studied a lot of like energy stuff, but I'm not familiar with this red brick stuff. But is it tied to the iron oxide? Is it tied to iron that's in them? Or I don't know. I don't know. All I know is there's mad structures built with red brick, right? And then is it's so weird that they conduct Ooh. electricity? So like, is there like a deep? Have you ever heard about the alternative theory of um, the Wizard of Oz? Uh, I've, I've heard, I've seen I'm, some, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm remember gonna... anything. I couldn't recite anything, but I do. I have seen videos where like they try to, yeah. they break down the wizard of Oz in so many, like, on so, so many different levels, you know, like the brick, go ahead. What the brick road symbolizes, but it was crazy. Cause someone said it to me and I was like, Oh damn. It was talking about how like different characters represented in certain ideologies. Yeah. It was I almost like a parable like a t- i was like damn i can't unsee anything like it, once you it have- has to be <laughs> like H- hollywood in the beginning and the music business in the beginning total total uh there's not that didn't happen organically like the the, the business of it like the well, i have a question like- for you yes when you're when you're talking about this i'm kind of conceptualizing like i i want to dig into this i love to learn but I've often wondered, like, I remember being younger and watching films and thinking, like, where do we grasp these ideas? Do you do you think that our our like world government, like purposely, like, do you think we have the ability to have more technology, but we handicap ourselves? And then like there's certain people that know like we're able to do this. Cause like when you're saying like you there's all these coliseums and there's these different structures, and like where was the uh, you know, there wasn't like structural engineers back then. Like, I'm wondering if we purposely hide, think about even back to the future. You know what I mean? Like they go into the future, like Hollywood gets their ideas, I think from a lot of reality. And I'm wondering if we suppress technologies that we know we're capable of utilizing. It, it, if I had to guess, they realized the free energy is not good for new world order. So they had a great reset. I think they do great resets all the time. I didn't think, I don't think it took fucking, you know, 4,000 years to figure out electricity. I think we By figured the way, it out. There's, I think there's, there's re, there's there's evidence there's evidence of an electromagnetic cataclysm where you see buildings and they're all over the place you see b- brick buildings but most of them look like the bricks like melted and blew up 
and then dried and turned into like just giant rocks and boulders. But you see the bricks all around him. You're like, there's so many pictures. If you could find one, just like that. You got like a plasma arc. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And you're like, wait a minute. Speaking of the great reset though, I, are you on Twitter or did you get kicked off? I pulled it. I don't want to have anything. Exited stage left. Well, the great reset was trending on Twitter recently because I guess Klaus Schwab literally wrote a book on it. Yes. 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 So there's all these buildings that were melted with these brick buildings all over the world, all over the world that look melted. They're melted. They're all over. So it looks like they used the bricks to do something with electricity. And then there was a short circuit. There was some kind of electromagnetic cataclysm that melted. There's all these melt. That's one layer. That's one great reset where it was like a, maybe the controllers zapped everybody and melted everything. Or maybe it, was, it came from like the sun or something, but there was some kind of electromagnetic cataclysm that melted buildings. They're all over the fucking place. Like these so that people was, were all on mushrooms and tapped into a different part of their brain and tapped So you're into asking, do you technology. think we, you think we hide technology? Well, one thing yeah, that I've, I've I'm always here. noticed, one thing that I've always noticed is with um I mean everything just advances uh in technology, everything, cars, everything, right? But some things never, never take one step forward. And the one thing that's never changed is that outlet in the, that you plug things into at your house. That shit been the same my whole life. That's never changed. So that tells me like, they know like we stop here, dog. Cause anything beyond this, we go into that fully free, uh, um, wireless electricity and wireless power. We yeah. already know that ain't going to work. We can't control everybody. If we can't control the energy, you want to control everybody. You control the energy, you control the food, you control the water. And you, that's it. Boom. I mean, you might control a bunch of other shit too, but those are the th- the big three, dog. The big well, and three. energy is such a secret and preserve entity. I literally can't get into it, but I'll just tell you, I used to work for a company that had to do with this kind of stuff. And I'm not legally allowed to disclose who it was, but let me just tell you that there are so many laws like FERC laws and things like that to where our power grids and our energy sources are more protected than a lot of the things in the military. And I think because you're exactly right, once you handicap power sources and once you handicap or make energy vulnerable to foreign entities or whatever, we're screwed because everything is relied on our power grids and different things. So you're exactly right. I think the only thing that has changed when you're dealing with like 110 outlets is like, uh, you know, GFI and different like water resistant outlets. I mean, yeah. but it's not yeah. much. That's it. It's still a plug. Boom. You still put it in. I was two years old my grandma's. I think that's the only advancement is a surge protector. Yeah. That's so exactly. So it, it, it looks like the, they've already figured out we can't go beyond this shit. You know what I mean? They probably, um, have, you know, you got to have the, the energy control. That's why they want us all driving electric cars like they're they're trying to tell us that it's to protect the environment but yeah. really it's it's for control they want to be able to unplug your car shut your car off if you talk some shit on the internet that's what they want i don't want to be a seth rich victim i don't want anyone hijacking my vehicle and i i see all these like things on twitter and tiktok where like there's lines for a wrapped around a corner for people trying to just t- charge their electric vehicles. And then oh, really, I haven't seen that. that, that oh, yeah. Hilarious. And like, it's so ironic because are, you're still in California, right? Yes. By the way, I think you still should move to Tampa. Get out while you can. Yeah. Um, but I think that this, it, it's just, how are you going to say to like, what is it that Newsom did? He said like by 2035, you have to have all electric vehicles. No, we don't. Yet, that's new world order. But you got to turn down your air conditioning because the power grid is overloaded. And, or how about you can't charge your car right now? <laughs> we, we're going to go all electric vehicles, but hey, today you can't charge your car because we don't have enough energy. It's, just, it's total why? retardation. This is why I know it sounds crass and I am a very open-minded person. I can get along with pretty much everyone. I'm at a point now where if you're so fucking stupid that you cannot see what is happening I can't, I don't, I can't even sit. I have a pool. I don't sit up by my pool and have cocktails because I can't unsee what I know. And it's like, how do you not notice that we are literally being sold a bag of crap? Like we are told this, but then we have this and none of it meshes. Like you can't double speak 
Like, oh, get an electric car, but by the way, you can't use your air conditioning because the power grid can't handle it. Then why are you pushing everyone? That is the literal definition of putting the cart before the horse because transformers are going to blow. And by the way, a lot of those transformers are laced in asbestos. Then you have other environmental concerns. So you're going to have transformer and substation fires. Like we are doing things backwards and there are safer ways to be more green. And I do think we should be more green, but we are doing it absolutely wrong. And I, I just, do you get me? Like, is, do you find it hard to be friends with people that have their just head buried in the sand? It's very difficult. I for talk me. football with them. Well, I love football, but I'm also super awake. So yeah. I, I, then when the football runs out, I put on my headset and I listen to X 22. Oh, I love X 22. I love it <laughs> every day, every <laughs> day. Um, uh, Kristen, you are awesome. I am. I was a little worried that, you know, we hadn't really uh, talked since the pandemic and I was really worried like, man, did she get sucked into that shit or is she still real? Like she was about a camera. I was a little worried. I didn't really know. Listen, but God the only thing damn, fake about me are, is my eyelashes. <laughs> you are, you are, you are more awake than ever. And you never wavered. You never buckled. You never, I I'm so, um, we're going to have you on again. I love talking to you. You're awesome. Well, you I'm can, covered anything. Hell, if you want to do a whole episode on where Weird Al Kinkovich, Hunter Biden, we can do that too. I'm Weird Al who? Kinkovich. That's what I call him. He's oh. got <laughs> I mean, listen, everyone's a freak at some point, but who sits there and like documents their every move? Yeah. I mean, yeah. as a military veteran, I took an oath three times and I'm disgusted by what I'm seeing. And you like Ron DeSantis? I do like DeSantis. Okay. Well, you um, like Trump? I like Trump. I, I don't own anything, Trump. I'm not a Republican. You don't have a red hat? No, I don't have anything mega, but you know what I find ironic? Isn't it crazy that if you wear one, it's dangerous? Isn't that crazy? I, I, the only red, thing that I if wear, you wear a hat that says, make America great again. I have a hat. Beat up. I get accused of being mega, which by the way, I'm not mega because I'm not a Republican, but I didn't, as a veteran, I can tell you like my life, I got a tax return for the first time in forever when Trump was in office. I got the ability to um, see whatever doctor I wanted to, instead of going to the crappy VA, like, it was great. I wasn't waking up going, oh shit, what's happening? Yeah. So, but I have a hat that says make taxation theft again. And everyone's like, oh, you orange man bad. And I'm like, that is the ad hominem response, whether it's on social media or in person. I'm like, I'm not a Republican. And then people don't know what to do with themselves. They're like, well, what are you? And, you know, I'm just pro freedom and liberty and I'm open-minded and I'm very, I have friends of all around the spectrum of beliefs, but I'm at a point now where if you support this disgusting pedophile, um, excuse me, a map, a minor attractive person, um, if you support these oligarchs and these absolute tyrant tyrants, I view you as an enemy to my livelihood, my investments and my family. And while I don't wish ill will upon these people, it's very hard to converse with these people. So after, I, after two years of this bullshit, yeah, and you're still yes. On it. Like, what okay. are you eating? Yeah. Like, for, for six months, I get it. You weren't paying attention. You're scared. You got a, you're a grandma. I get it. But it's two years. Wake yeah. the fuck no, up. Almost All three. Right? Almost three. God damn. Shit, Kristen. How, how can people find you? Uh, you can find me everywhere with the handle at Krista Megan. I am on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, Getter, Truth Social, you name it. But Eddie, if you don't mind, could I plug my legal fundraiser? Plug whatever you want. You no, know, because I'm such a grifter. So I want to explain to the people that are watching. I told you I'm a core credentialed subject matter expert. And what that means is, is when you're going to testify as an expert witness, if anyone watched the Johnny Depp trials, he saw a lot of expert witnesses. Um, you have to be approved by a judge. I've never been rejected in a court case as an expert on the topics I'm testifying on. But the Daily Beast decided to publish an article about me, which questioned my credentials, mocked my VA disabilities, um, and also said that I was responsible for stoking the fourth wave of COVID in my state of Michigan. Um, the entire article is just complete trash and I'm pro first amendment, but you can't defame or lie about somebody. So I'm suing their asses. I'm Beautiful. suing the daily beast. And I'm also suing the professional organization in my career field called the American industrial hygiene association. Cause let me tell you what these people did. They put out a statement in this article to say that greater than 99%, a majority of the members of the AIHA, which are the experts in my field 
agree that masks are proper risk mitigating efforts. That is not true. I've been a member since as long as I can remember since maybe 2003. We've never were, were surveyed. It's all a huge collaborative effort to just push useless control measures. But guess who? The person in charge of my professional organization, guess where he used to work? 3M. 3M makes masks and respirators. So you don't need to be a scientist or a genius to connect the dots there. So I am suing them for defamation and defamation per se because they accuse me of crimes. If anyone would like to skip a coffee and donate, um, I'm this close to doing OnlyFans and folding laundry with my feet because this is highly expensive. You can do this at givesendgo.com. Again, givesendgo.com forward slash truth and health. I don't want to profit off of what I'm doing. I've done everything pro bono. I've probably lost almost $200,000 in billable hours because I do this to help people, not to profit. But in the process of doing this, I've lost the ability to do more court cases because this is the article that is submitted to the judge. So help me hold these people accountable for lying about me because as the teens say, I have the receipts. So thank you for letting me plug that. I just, I just want to continue to use my powers for good and uh, no amount of defamation, attacks, death threats is ever going to silence me from doing what I took an oath to do. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Man, I'm so proud of you. You're awesome. Well, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen, Megan, thank you. We'll talk soon. Have a great night. Thank you. The Jiu-Jitsu Dojo is the ultimate training ground for life. Jiu-Jitsu will accelerate the evolution of your being, your consciousness, your soul. Through this amazing art, you will prove to yourself that you can master anything you set your mind to. Happy birthday, Eddie Bravo! I leave for Brazil tomorrow. Are you the fear factor guy? I'm uh, like six pounds over. Time to sweat it out. Just imagine someone that has no idea how different your game is. I'll tell you what this weekend was, man. It was a culmination point where all your hard work comes to like one great moment in time. You showed that you're a fucking champion. Guy who goes against convention, you created your own shit and figured interesting ways to get around problems in jujitsu. It shows you that great things are possible if you work hard, if you dedicate yourself and you use your creativity and you push through, your own human potential just goes up. My 10th Planet Association has grown rapidly to over 70 academies worldwide, and their curriculums are all synced to 10th Planet headquarters located in downtown Los Angeles. I'm Eddie Bravo. I hope to see you on the mats. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. <laughs> <laughs>